FTW Broadcasting presents Star Wars The Old Republic Welcome ladies and gentlemen, AWOL here from FTW Broadcasting. Thank you so much for tuning into the Star Wars Tour preview series. Now in episode number two, we're going to go ahead and give you a preview of the Sith Inquisitor, which is one of the two Sith classes that you can choose from on the Galactic Empire side. I'm going to show you both of those classes working together right now in this video footage. This is from E3 2010. The male character that you see there, that is the Sith Warrior. Female character, that is Sith Inquisitor. The Sith Warrior, if you look at his look, you look at his style, the way that he's kind of playing here in this video, very much similar to Darth Vader. This is completely intentional by the devs. They wanted you to be able to basically play Darth Vader in one form or another in this game. He's got the heavy armor, he's got the brute force, he's got just straight up brute damage, and uh, also he's going to have some force choke in there as well. So Darth Vader archetype, definitely going to be able to play that in this game, folks. But that's not what we're going to concentrate on right now. We're going to concentrate on the Sith and Inquisitor. Sith Inquisitor is going to allow you to play the archetypes of Emperor Palpatine and Darth Maul. I know, awesome, right? So you can pick from Vader, Palpatine, or Darth Maul and play any one of those three styles. I'm going to dive a little bit more into those advanced styles on the Sith Inquisitor side here in a moment. Right now I'm going to put up some footage of some of the first missions that you can play as the Sith Inquisitor in the game. This is an Inquisitor, like level 1 through 5, doing some nub stomping, kind of learning his abilities. But as you can see, he's got a sword, uh, doing a little bit of combat, little, using a little bit of lightning abilities here. And as a Sith Inquisitor, you're going to start out on the planet of Korriban, where the Sith Aqu Academy has been established. And this is where the new Sith army is being trained and deployed from. So as any type of Sith character, you're going to come from this planet, and your story is going to be based on passion, conquest, stepping on the heads of everyone else around you to get to the top. Very excited about that. Here's what the devs have to say about your class progression as you move from the beginning into your advanced classes. So the Sith Inquisitor, he starts off, um, he's lightly armored, he's very acrobatic, he uses a lot of lightning abilities, um, and also some telekinetics as well. Um, then, when you decide to specialize, you can either really focus on the lightning abilities and being more of a longer range character and a support character, you know, where you get to just like take out five guys with like a giant lightning storm or lift them up into the air and like fill them with lightning and crash them down to the ground. I don't know if you managed to get the hands-on demo, but I'm sure you had a little bit of fun with that. Um, but you can also take a different path where you're much more about the acrobatic dual, like where you're um, wielding the lightsaber staff and you know, you're much faster paced. Um, and that's, you also still use lightning, but it is a different feel. Alright, so at level 10 you're going to be able to choose to go one of two directions with your advanced classes. Advanced class number one is going to be the Sith Sorcerer, who's going to be based on Emperor Palpatine. Advanced class number two, Sith Assassin, who's based on Darth Maul. Let's get right into the Sith Assassin first. So this guy, he's going to be a dual-bladed saber type of Sith. He's going to have stealth abilities. Burst melee DPS, and he's also going to have some tanking abilities, and as that Deb said in that video, he's going to have lightning abilities as well. Alright, so this looks like it's going to be very much a hybrid class, which is going to be based more or less in a thief type of framework. So, option number one, you're going to be able to stealth up, and you're going to be able to come in and burst melee DPS people with that dual bladed saber. That sounds awesome. It says tanking, so you're going to be able to do a little bit of off-tanking. As soon as, say, your Sith Warrior picks up the aggro, you'll be able to come in and do some dual uh, saber damage there in an off-tanking type of scenario. I'm totally on board with that. Now let's take a look at this footage right now, which intrigues me. It's some of the only Sith Assassin footage out there. In this footage, obviously, he's got his dual-bladed saber out. He's blocking those blaster attacks. He's, he's going to lightning one guy and throw him up in the air and appear to stun him or take him out of battle and lightning the other guy right to death. As the other guy comes to the ground, he gets lightning, and he's done Zor. Okay, this is interesting because he doesn't even use his dual-bladed saber in this situation. Right, this worries me a little bit. This is just some random demo footage, right? But I don't want this Sith Assassin to be too much of a hybrid character. Why? Well, because he might just be average at doing all of these things. He might be average at being stealth. He might do some average damage, average tanking, and maybe some average control abilities. If you want to do all those things and you want to be able to react to any different type of scenario, that sounds great. But 
for me, if I'm playing a Sith character, I want to be amazing, super powerful at doing certain types of things, as opposed to just being okay at a lot of things. We're gonna see, I want to see how Bioware is going to balance this as we move forward, but regardless, Sith Assassin looks totally badass, especially for that dual lightsaber action. I've talked enough about him, let's get into the Sith Sorcerer right now. Alright, as I mentioned earlier, the Sith Sorcerer is the advanced class based on Emperor Palpatine. So his features are going to include a single lightsaber, force lightning, force drain. He's going to be namely a ranged DPS character or healer. Interesting. So let's break these down one by one. Single lightsaber. Why do you care about having a lightsaber if you're Emperor Palpatine, right? Okay, so he used those in the episodes 1, 2, and 3. He did use it, his lightsaber a little bit against Yoda. Alright, the devs have said that any Jedi or any Sith character that you choose in this game, they want you to have the lightsaber ability available because it's so iconic. I don't blame them there, but that's not going to be the Sith Sorcerer's strength. Your lightsaber, uh, if I'm going to speculate a little bit, I think your lightsaber is going to be more useful in, say, solo PvE. Uh, if you want to save up your force power for that big lieutenant or boss coming up, go ahead and hack down a couple uh, lower level enemies with your lightsaber so you can go into the next fight with a full bar. Also, it's going to be used to deflect, like, blaster attacks and that sort of thing. But definitely not going to be your main source of damage as the Sith Sorcerer. That's what the Sith Assassin's all about, right? This character's main damage is going to be based in Force Lightning. Yes, excellent. Emperor Palpatine, that's what I'm seeing right now. Emperor Palpatine, Force Lightning, the crap out of Luke. Force Lightning. Going to be ranged DPS, but it's also going to provide you with CC and control abilities. You'll be able to keep one enemy out of combat, spin him up in the air with your force lightning. Stun a group of enemies with a sort of a force chain lightning. And also you can just do direct single target damage with this force lightning and just straight up kill a guy. That's going to be great, and that's going to be your way of controlling things from afar, because you're going to be more of a light character. You're not going to have all that HP. Now the other aspect here is force drain and healer. Force drain. Looks like Sith Sorcerer is going to be the anti-Jedi character. If you're able to drain straight up drain force power from the Jedi characters, that's going to be fabulous. And it's not just going to be in a PvP scenario, that's also going to be in PvE. A lot of the things that you're going to fight in PvE are going to be Jedi novices. And you're also going to run into Jedi lieutenants and Jedi bosses in the game as well. So force drain is going to be very, very effective there. You might not have to worry about force regen with this character as much because of that ability very useful. There's also a healer part of this archetype with the Sith Sorcerer, which seems very logical to me. You're going to be in the back, you're going to be controlling combat, you're going to be throwing down damage. Why not be able to heal your party? There's virtually no information out there on the healing abilities of the Sith Sorcerer, so I can't confirm or deny whether he's going to be the main healer for the Galactic Empire or just one of the healers for the Galactic Empire. More information on that as it becomes available. Now, as I mentioned in the last video in the Game Overview video, every class is going to have their own unique starship available to them. What you're looking at right now is the Fury Class Imperial Interceptor, which is a starship available to the Sith Warrior and Sith Inquisitor classes. The Fury is a favorite among Sith Lords because it has highly sophisticated technology and weapon systems, an advanced hyperdrive, state-of-the-art sublight engines, and the Fury is the most versatile starship in the entire Imperial fleet. This thing was actually originally designed for high-priority military missions. Sith Lords, they took the best ship in the fleet, and then they pimped out the interior. Take a look at the shots of the Imperial's interior, they're actually gorgeous. And adjustments have been made to make this thing luxury, to make this thing aesthetically pleasing for the Sith Lords, and I like how the artists have drawn from the Star Wars universe thousands of years later and brought in that aesthetic of the old Imperial command ship and TIE Interceptor. I like how they didn't forget the past in the style here. No expenses have been spared on these ships, as Sith Lords demand a role in a Mercedes-Benz. So thank you so much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you learned a little bit about the Sith Inquisitor here. Now, if you want to see our previous video game overview, click in the top left-hand corner. And if you want to see our next episode, just click in the top right-hand corner. Well, I'm going to do episodes on all of the classes in this game, all the starships, planets, everything. So subscribe to FTW Broadcasting if you're interested in getting more coverage. If you want to check out our Star Wars Tour Preview Playlist, click in the bottom left-hand corner. That'll show you all the episodes that we've made thus far. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you in the Star Wars universe.